And reactions have also continued to trail. The sentence of a senior lawyer in Enugu State, Bright Nguyenay, by a magistrate's court without an option of a fine. The 49-year-old was jailed following a complaint by a faction of the Akwuke Town Union in Enugu South local government area about the lodging of 15 million naira belonging to the community into the bank account of Nguyenay's law firm, and the subsequent disbursement of 11 million naira from the funds to a contractor who constructed the community's road. The accused was the union secretary and legal advisor when a major crisis arose in the union's leadership that resulted in an embargo on the account of town union. A decision was taken to use the lawyer's account for the union's urgent matters until the matter was resolved, well, for a clearer perspective on this controversial judgment, we now turn to Lucky Chuku, a lawyer and former commissioner in Enugu State. He will be discussing Ngenez uh, Travails, his uh, perceived to have uh, some political undertones to them as well. Welcome to Newsday and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. As we try to unpack the well, um, details of this story, could you tell us more? Yes. Um, Brighton Gene was a secretary of the town union of Akuke and a, a poly legal advisor. So there was a problem in the family, and they now had another faction of the town union. The town union, the other faction now wrote a, a petition to the police that uh, the sum of um, uh, 15 million naira was paid into the account of um, Honorable Bright Ngene, the man who won the assembly seat for Enugu Urban constituency. Before then, due to the crisis, the account of the community was frozen. So it was collectively agreed on that the Bright Ngenes account, account number, his chamber's account number should be used in lodging all the money. So the sum of 15 million was paid into that account, out of which 11 million was withdrawn for the construction of the road, which was constructed and completed. That was in 2017. Then the faction of the town union now wrote a petition to the police. The matter was charged to court and was kept in abeyance. Nothing happened until Brighton contested the election under the Labour Party and won with 5,862 votes. Why is PDP counterpart, Honorable Samungene, scored 2,098 votes? Bright Ngene was subsequently declared winner and certificate of return given to him. Then the PDP now went to election petition tribunal. The tribunal now ordered that there should be a rerun in eight of the polling units in Enugu South urban constituency. INEC now slated, in fact, the tribunal gave 90 days for this election, the rerun to be completed. So on 3rd of February, INEC slated an election. All of us were there. Materials were about being distributed. When we now said, where is the result sheet? The result sheet got missing. In fact, it was alleged that the result sheet was detached and the result already written in favor of the PDP candidate, Honorable Samungen. So we now insisted that no result sheet, no election. Having written that result, there was no way they could smuggle it back because we were all there. The, uh, the senator representing Enugu is senatorial 
zone was there. The member representing Enugu, Enugu North and South Federal Constituency, Chimatu, was there. These are under Labour Party. And then the uh, House of Representatives member representing Enugu East and its user, local government, Professor Namchi, they were all there. So all of us insisted no resource sheet, no electorate. So they were boxed into a corner. Then at around 2 p.m., the resident electoral commissioner, Chupu Emeka, Mr. Chupu Emeka Joseph Chupu, now called all the parties and said that the election has been cancelled and postponed. We sought to know the reason why the election was cancelled and postponed. He could not give us any reason. Of course, being law-abiding citizens, we had to go. A petition was now written by Honorable Breitinger to the national, to the chairman of the uh, INEC, Independent Electoral Commission, uh, Professor Yakub Mahmoud. Based on that petition, the REC, Resident Electoral Commissioner for Anambra State, Mrs. Elizabeth Agu, was detailed with his staff to come to Enugu and conduct the election. The resident electoral commissioner for Enugu State, Chupu Emeka, Joseph Chupu, and the EO, Enugu South Local Government Area, Mr. Francis Chibu, were asked to step aside. Ms. Elizabeth came, all the accreditation, everything had already been completed. When the PDP now saw that they were going to lose, in fact, Honorable Samungel started de destroying INEC materials, including the cubicles. He was caught on camera. By that time, Chief Jim Wobodo has arrived and said, what are they waiting for? That the election has been concluded. In fact, that engineered them the more. So the woman first on safe. He was asked, she was asked to declare the result inconclusive, and she said no. I'll write my report to Abuja, which he eventually did. Now, the matter that was in the court in 2017, and no person made mention of that, and the town union said, we want to withdraw this matter. There is room for adjudication in our statute, and there is room for reconciliation. The matter eventually surfaced again when Bright was declared winner. He was charged to court, and then he now took a plea of not guilty. In fact, there were two. Why Bright was the secretary and the legal advisor, Mr. John Ewo was the president general of Akuke Town Union. Both of them were charged. Now, INEC now gave another date, 8th of June, for another rerun. But the irony of it is that the man that has been accused of tampering with the result sheet, the resident electoral commissioner for Enugu State, Mr. Chupu Emeka, Joseph Chupu, and the EO, the electoral officer of Enugu South local government, were now asked to conduct the election these Mr. are people Chukwe. that were asked to step aside for not giving Mr. Chukwe, account allow me to interrupt of the you, you know, for the sake of time. That is now, when we started this interview, you know, we were talking about um, a case, I guess, of alleged corruption, and um, the person in question, you know, was was jailed without an option of fine. Now, you've brought in the issue of election, you know. So I'm guessing what you're trying to say, you know, is that the judgment is politically motivated. But then, you know, we know how the legal system Good. works in Nigeria. You know, it grinds really slowly and sometimes cases go on for years. So are you saying that because the person in question has now been elected, which is still, you know, under some form of controversy, that the law case should not go on? Can you clarify your stance? Yes, it is because he has won an election and at any rerun, he was going to win again. 
Meanwhile, the tribunal ordered that the run should take place within 90 days. After the 90 days set by the tribunal, another 125 days has come and gone. So what do you do in the circumstance? You declare the man who has the highest number of votes, the winner. But I now said there was going to be another round. In eight un polling units, eight polling units in one ward. Now they say the election will be taking place, the rerun on 8th of June. And suddenly they cancelled it again. Let me now tell you the nexus, the connection. They wanted Honorable Brighton, who is equally a lawyer, behind bars. Then I never will now roll out timetable for the conduct of the election of House of Assembly in Wuhan South local government. That is why we say it is politically motivated. Again, the magistrate that handled this matter, uh, his worship, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Dominic Ong, the way he was going about the matter almost on daily basis, five motions were Five motions were given to him. He refused to accept service and ordered the clerk not to accept any, including the petition to NJC Abuja that acknowledged the petition written by Honorable Brighton Gale. He refused to accept service on that. And all other five motions, he was accused of bias in open court and in law. When you are accused of open bias, this one manifestly open bias. You wash off your hands from the matter. He did not. Three times the matter was removed from his court. Three times the matter was returned to his court. He insisted on trying that case. Of course, the Ministry of the entire thing, uh, the Ministry of the Speedy Trial of uh, uh, Bright uh, Ngene and uh, Mr. Uh, John Ewo was the unusual presence of many policemen and to the teeth. They came in four Hilux vehicles, van, and then in four Siena verb van with an armored personnel carrier. I've only seen, I've only seen this kind of scene during a election petition uh, hearing involving governorship or maybe Senate and presidential. So when this happened, the thing aroused our feelings and all the rest of them. The uh, uh, policemen, about six, eight, were escorting him everywhere he goes and so on and so forth. Now the motions that were served on him, he refused to, to take any and said, my hands are tied in open court. I will deliver judgment. Even with the, the two councils, one uh, 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 barrister CJS uh, Okereke and Mr. B.C. Mwobor. B.C. Mwobor was for Mr. John Ewo, while uh, barrister Okereke was for Bright Ngele. They were not even given the time to address the court, which, in fact, which amounts to judicial Recklessness, judicial somersault, judicial dictatorship. He refused to accept all the motions that were served on him and ordered the clerk not to accept any motion. On 28th of June, he said, I must give judgment today, whether you people like it or not, whether the lawyers have addressed the court or not. And we are talking of a state that has produced a lawyer, foremost lawyer, who went to the World Court, Dadi Onyama. We are talking of a state that had produced former Commissioner for Justice and Attorney General, late Justice Naman, a senior advocate of Nigeria, and former Justice of the Supreme Court, Antonio Anagoro, former Justice of the Supreme Court again, Justice Philip Nemekago. That a magistrate will now stand 
justice on its head. As a result, they hear, in fact, he was even hearing the matter on a daily basis. On one occasion, the lawyer to Mr. John Ewo didn't come to court. And the other lawyer now asked for an adjournment. He said no. He foreclosed the case of John Ewo. So John Ewo was not represented by his lawyer. And he wrote, the, he wrote, he had already written judgment and said they should come on 28th, being Friday, by 12. So when they got there, their lawyers were there. The lawyer to Mr. John Ewe now said, you foreclosed him because I was not here. Now this is a motion. Filed. And I want to read it. And he said, no, I will not allow you to do anything. I must read my judgment. He read his judgment, sentenced them to seven years imprisonment without option of fine. It was then that we now knew that the, all the mobile policemen that were in court were brought there so that after reading the judgment, they would take these people straight to the prison yard and then two Hillel's van escorted him to his house. Okay, Mr. Chuku, Mr. Lockheed. That is what? Please, uh, right. you're giving quite an in-depth uh, uh, summary of what's going on. But just for the sake of time, I wanted to ask you, it seems that these types of situations crop up all over the country. And that is where a politician or a lawyer uh, supposedly gets thrown in jail for uh, political uh, uh, motivations. And uh, it upsets the natural order of things. How can we begin to address this uh, behavior within our Nigerian system and allow for the court of law to be uh, to conduct itself in a manner that is uh, good for all sides. Uh, thank you for that question. You see, we are law-abiding citizens. Uh, we've decided to appeal against that judgment because there are many grounds of appeal. Now. A, a petition has been written against you to NJC. The NJC acknowledged that petition and now said you should be served and that you should stop any proceedings on that matter forthwith. It's a grounds of appeal. So we intend to go on appeal. In fact, we are going to file our appeal as quickly as possible. Then on the side of INEC, will equally serve them? Because they, now, they will now roll out their timetable and say there will be an election. So we are going to Federal High Court again to ask for a stay and to ask INEC not to conduct any election. In fact, INEC is out of time. Bright Ingen would have been declared winner or should have been declared winner. Going by the fact that the 90 days given by the tribunal, election petition tribunal, has elapsed and added another 125 days. So anything INEC is doing in this present circumstance is a nullity, ultra virus, and will not have any effect. So Commissioner we want to cry out to the entire world what is happening. Mr. Lokichuku, Sorry. lawyer and former commissioner in Enugu State, thank you so much for joining us on Newsday, and we wish you all the best in the appeal.